key to understanding Francis of Assisi's life is that he was born to a very wealthy father. Pietro de Bernardoni was a cloth merchant. In fact, Francis was born Giovanni, and uh, he was named Francesco because his father had just come back uh, from a trip from France. Now Francis, uh, his biographers tell us, was something, something of a wild youth. Uh, in fact, one of his biographers says he was the king of all youth in Assisi, kind of a leader of the pack, basically. He decided to be a soldier, but uh, one night he had a dream where Jesus said to him, serve the master and not the man. A few days later, he was traveling along the road and he came across a leper, and Francis had a real revulsion um, of, of lepers, and uh, yet somehow he realized that he was called to serve this person. He dismounted his horse, embraced the man, and was filled with this wonderful sense of consolation and realized that this was Jesus coming to him in disguise, as it were. From this time forward, Francis started to live very simply. He started to visit hospitals, help the poor. He stopped in a small church called San Damiano, and there was a cross there. And from the cross, Christ spoke to him and said, Francesco, go and repair my church, which you see is in disrepair. Francis, with his literal mindedness, thought he meant that particular church. So he went to his father's workshop, stole a bolt of cloth, sold it, and started repairing the church. His father, not surprisingly, was furious, started to bring a lawsuit against him. There was a big uproar in town, and a few days later, Francis appeared in the town square, removed all of his clothes, threw them in the town square, and said, I give everything back to you. The bishop who was watching was so struck by this, he burst into tears and covered Francis, who was naked, with his cloak. And so the symbolism was complete. He had divested himself of all of his father's wealth and was taking on the protection of the church. From then on in, Francis's life was devoted to serving God Jesus Christ and who the person he called Lady Poverty. Poverty is really the essence of Francis of Assisi, which is very important to see him as coming from a wealthy family. So it is a real break from Francis's past. Uh, he gradually gathers around him a group of uh, friends um, who are called the Franciscans. Uh, they fan out and start preaching. Uh, the number of Franciscans grows rapidly. Um, he gets the papal approval for the order and he even goes to meet the Sultan uh, this is during the Crusades, to try to broker some sort of peace. And the legend is that the Sultan says, your religion is very beautiful, but I could not accept it because I would be killed if that happened. Francis was also a pretty good wordsmith, too. Um, some people say that his Canticle of Brother's Son, uh, which is a sort of song of praise to nature and to animals and to God, is one of the first things that's really written in the vernacular Italian. Um, and so Francis is seen as kind of a, an important literary figure. But my favorite saying of Francis of Assisi is a very short one uh, and really sums up the Franciscan message, which is, preach the gospel, use words when necessary. Francis is a really austere person, but very joyful. He loved nature. Uh, there are some wonderful legendary stories about him preaching to the birds, uh, you know, taming a, a very fierce wolf. But in the end, even Francis himself became a little too strict for the Franciscans, who found his style of poverty uh, a little too austere. And at one point, there was a time when it looked like Francis would have to leave the Franciscans himself. At the end of his life, um, he suffered from great problems with his eyes, um, he received the stigmata, which are the uh, wounds of Christ um, and kind of mystical experience. And really, by the end of his life, people knew that he was a saint. Very beautifully, um, when he was dying, he asked to be laying on the ground um, to die, to be near uh, Sister Earth, as he called it. And so Francis's life is really one of total conversion. And I think that we've tamed Francis into something that's really domesticated and cute, like a little doll, basically. But if you met the real Francis of Assisi, the guy that stripped himself naked in the public square, the guy that lived the most austere poverty, the guy that took the gospel literally uh, in terms of being as radical a Christian as you could be, the guy that basically uh, transformed the medieval church, you would not see him as cute. You would see him as someone who was really untamable, uh, someone who was wild in a sense and who had this incredible energy. But here was a guy who really sacrificed everything to serve Jesus. 
So I think what happens is by taming the saint, we not only uh, sort of distance ourselves from, from the real story, which is unfortunate, but we kind of uh, separate ourselves uh, from the reality of the Christian message, which is uh, impinging on all of us. So it's a lot easier to see Francis of Assisi as a little concrete garden statue than it is to see him in all his complexity. But I think as Christians, that's what we're called to do. Culture today tells us that we are what we buy, we are what we wear, and we are what kind of car we drive. Francis of Assisi says we're not. One of the messages of Francis of Assisi is don't be afraid to live simply, no matter how much pressure is on you. And if you look to him, think about his wonderful uh, experience of just divesting himself of all of his clothes. I wouldn't go that far, but Francis tells us you don't have to have a lot of junk in your life. So try to live simply. That's what Francis tells us.